Porphyria. One day you wake up to your eyes burning from the sunlight filtering through your blinds. The light isn't just irritating, it feels like your eyes are being scorched. Rushing to close the curtains, you realize the damage is done. Your eyes are now painfully sensitive to even indoor light. This is what we call severe porphyria flare-up. Heightens your photosensitivity, exposure to sunlight literally becomes toxic, causing agonizing burns, blisters, and scarring. Porphyria is a rare inherited metabolic disorder that would make you the modern-day Dracula. While porphyrins, the toxins of this disorder, aren't typically problematic at normal levels, a buildup of certain molecules can cause issues ranging from the uncomfortable to the downright disturbing. It basically makes you a living vampire, literally. Now, going outdoors during daylight hours could leave you with severe disfiguring burns as these excess porphyrins circulate through your system, savagely reacting to UV rays. But usually, light sensitivity is just the tip of the iceberg. Porphyria can also cause intense, tearing abdominal pains like labor contractions, which, for context, is compared to breaking over 100 bones. Necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis usually starts quite innocently enough. Maybe a small cut, insect bite, or something equally minor that you wouldn't give a second thought. But then, the real show begins as a rare but extremely aggressive bacterial infection takes hold. These flesh-eating bacteria somehow gain a foothold and start going to town on the parts of your skin connecting muscle. As the name suggests, they cause extensive necrotizing or death of the fascia tissue. Issue. So think of your muscle coverings literally being digested and liquefied in real time by these microscopic bacteria. It spreads rapidly, eating up more and more tissue with each passing hour at an insane speed. The symptoms quickly become intense, severe pain, fever, and the skin literally turning a sickly purplish-red discoloration as the underlying tissues are eaten alive. As the infection gains ground, the skin may start forming large blood-filled blisters filled with toxic fluid. If left untreated, the bacteria can quite literally consume a person's entire muscle groups down to the bone within a matter of days. Progeria. To put this genetic disease for you in perspective, now you're a parent. You remember the day your little one was born. So perfect, so full of life and boundless possibilities. But then, one day, the early signs started appearing far too soon. The hair loss, the tight and wrinkled skin. Your child's body is aging at 8 to 10 times the normal rate. That is progeria. Watching their skin become paper thin and fragile, seeing them lose that happiness as the fat and muscle waste away, joints stiffening until they can barely move. The plump, pinchable baby legs and hands turn into thin, bony arms in what feels like a blink of an eye. Kids with progeria rapidly lose the fluidity and flexibility children's bodies are meant to have. It's like your joints and mobility stiffen up until every move becomes a painful chore. Playtime and running free get swapped out for arthritis before they're out of preschool. So in just a handful of years, a newborn has gone from a pushchair to a wheelchair. And now you need to take care of a child trapped in a 70-year-old body. Toxic epidermal necrolysis. Essentially, 10 is a rare but severe skin reaction typically triggered by certain medications or infections. It causes the top layer of the skin, the epidermis, to detach from the layers beneath in sheets. Imagine trying to peel off an entire bed sheet that's been super glued to your body. That's kind of what's happening, except way more painful and dangerous. One day you're just going about your day, maybe fighting off a mild bacterial infection or reaction to a new medication. No big deal, you've pushed through worse. But then, out of nowhere, your body pulls the most dramatic diva-level tantrum of all time. It's like your own skin looks around and suddenly shouts, you know what? I'm over this. I quit. Now, think of having to do your daily routine while molting like a massive snake. Swallowing feels like you're chewing sand as the skin of your mouth literally peels off. At this point, your body is essentially pulled off its version of a full frontal charitable donation, shedding pounds of skin that should have stayed put. With so much of your protective skin barrier gone, you're suddenly vulnerable to every pathogen, every infection risk out there. Patients often need to be 
be hospitalized, sometimes even in burn units because so much skin is involved. The main priorities are identifying and stopping whatever triggered the reaction. Fatal familial insomnia. Now, the idea here, I know what you're thinking, insomnia, not being able to sleep. Sure, it's unpleasant, but not fatal. See, this disease is the ultra-rare genetic brain condition in which your body just forgets how to sleep. Your circadian rhythms and sleep-wake cycles get all scrambled until they basically stop working altogether. This is full-blown eternal wakefulness. There's no off switch, no escape once it takes hold. You'll start experiencing disturbing symptoms, panic attacks, paranoia, phobias. Your brain quite literally starts to go insane from the unrelenting sleeplessness. And eventually, after months of torture, your body and mind just give out completely as systems start shutting down. FFI is hereditary, caused by a genetic mutation, so you could be a perfectly healthy person just going about your life until one day you get hit with this time bomb of a disorder carried in your own DNA, a death sentence carved into your biology. There's no known cure or treatment, just a raft of experimental therapies that may slightly delay the inevitable descent into that final, eternal slumber. Alzheimer's. Think about how you go about your daily life when you start having little lapses in memory, misplacing keys, forgetting names, the small things. It's annoying, sure, but you just think it's because you're getting older and becoming a bit more forgetful. But then the instances become more frequent and more disruptive. You're having trouble remembering how to perform routine tasks you've done a thousand times before. Conversations become challenging as you struggle to find the right words. Maybe you get lost driving somewhere familiar. Those little small hiccups where you forget your keys graduate to major thinking deficits over time as Alzheimer's spreads its tangled web of protein plaques and tangles throughout your brain. Short-term memory seriously declines declines to the point of not recalling what you had for breakfast. In the latter stages, the disease steals away language skills, reasoning ability, and even the recollection of memories from decades past. Your first kiss, your favorite burger, or even the time you subscribed to the evaluator. Basic body functions eventually become impaired as more brain regions succumb. The person you used to be tragically fades away bit by bit. Despite decades of research, Alzheimer's still has no cure, as the brain is quite literally the most complex thing in the universe. Hemophilia. You'd be part of a ruling bloodline only to have a bleeding disorder lurking unseen in your lineage passed along through the generations like an unwanted crown all because you got engaged to your lovely first cousin. For centuries, hemophilia remained a closely guarded secret among European monarchs, the royal disease, as they say. A sickness that could strike anywhere from birth, robbing the princess of the opportunity to properly take the throne due to their inability to survive even the most minor childhood injuries or illnesses without bleeding to death. So you can imagine the fear and uncertainty that hit royal families who carried this genetic curse. Having to shelter heirs to the point of overprotection, terrified that a simple fall, cut, or nosebleed could kill them from blood loss. The constant, inescapable fear of death by bleeding looming over every single moment as before modern medicine, it meant that any accident be as good as dead. They weren't a royal fashion statement, but rather a safety measure because the royal medics knew a single nick and we'd have a royal fountain of blood. Guillain-Barre syndrome. Guillain-Barre syndrome is one of those conditions that can really throw your body through the ringer. In a rare occurrence affecting around two out of every 100,000 people, the immune system, which is designed to protect the body against infection and diseases, begins attacking the body's own nerves. It's like having your trusted bodyguard go rogue and suplex you out of the blue. With GBS, this friendly fire from the immune system causes the nerves to become inflamed and and it can progress rapidly. One day you might be feeling perfectly fine, and the next you're experiencing weakness in your legs that quickly spreads to your arms and other muscles. Your body is essentially shutting down its communication lines one nerve at a time. As the condition progresses, the weakness can become so severe that even simple tasks like walking or holding a glass become monumental challenges. You'll have to rely on others for the most basic of needs because your muscles have essentially gone on strike. In some cases, GBS can even affect the nerves that control your breathing muscles, which 
can be terrifying as your body's life support system is being held hostage by your own immune system. And if not treated, even with a ventilator, the lungs will continue to collapse. Fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. At its worst, you are basically given a death sentence to be trapped in your own body because of a few faulty genes. In this disease, you can think of your muscles, tendons, and ligaments slowly being encased in an extra skeleton made of bone as you slowly get imprisoned inside your own hardening body as it progressively turns you to stone from the inside out. And the way it gets triggered is particularly cruel. Even the most minor injury or trauma can set off that extreme bone growth. Think of the sufferers of this disease a bit like that old Brendan Fraser mummy movie, slowly but surely getting that sinking feeling that their bodies are betraying them by turning to solid bone. Except instead of ancient curses, it's just some misbehaving genes sentencing them to a future as their own organic statues. Your body confuses a cut or bruise for a broken bone, and desperately tries to heal it by creating more bone matrix, but in all the wrong places. So you're essentially living in constant risk that the next harmless bump or fall could rapidly immobilize whatever joint was impacted. However, know what else is the worst disease anyone could have? A case of no discorditis. The good news for you, the cure is pretty simple. Join our Discord to get the cure. Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes. Now, you can imagine having a body that's quite literally more flexible and stretchy than it should be. It's like being made of clay instead of building materials. You'd now have skin with the elasticity and recoil of a well-worn rubber band. It's like the universe looked at you and said, you know what would be hilarious? Making this person's entire skin out of the same material as an old rubber band. So they can pinch and pull and contort their flesh into avant-garde sculptures of the human form with ease. This disease is a genetic disorder that occurs usually. The real joy is having your body's crucial connective infrastructure essentially built out of the same material as a stack of Jenga blocks. One unstable joint away from your entire skeletal system potentially clattering into crisis at any given moment. Oh no, I sneezed while sitting on the couch too vigorously and now it appears my bones have uncoupled from their sockets. Myasthenia gravis. So, you're at a friend's wedding, struggling to keep your eyes open as the ceremony unfolds due to your heavy, unresponsive eyelids. Later at the reception, smiling for photos and chewing your meal become challenging tasks. By evening, even chatting is exhausting as your speech muscles weaken. This day is basically how myasthenia gravis affects your physical abilities and social life. Myasthenia gravis is a rare autoimmune disorder that gradually strips away the body's muscle strength and stamina. And for about 14 people in every 200,000 in Europe, this is their fate. In this case, it's having your own immune system sabotage against the connections between nerves and muscles. With this disease, the immune system produces produces antibodies that disrupt the neuromuscular junctions, those vital relays that allow the brain's electrical signals to activate muscle fibers for movement. Simple acts like brushing your teeth, combing your hair, or even chewing and swallowing start feeling laborious as the muscles meant for those routine motions fatigue far faster than normal. The cruel irony is that this disease fluctuates its severity based on a person's physical exertion and activity levels. Use a weakened muscle too much, and it exhausts costs even faster, but being lazy also allows the weakness to potentially accelerate across your body's muscles. It's a lose-lose situation in managing MG's onslaught. For some, the deterioration eventually impacts their ability to see, chew, swallow, smile, and breathe, robbing them of independence and quality of life. They essentially become trapped inside their own progressively paralyzed bodies as the immune system continues dismantling that infrastructure for movement. Familia hypercholesterolemia. Let's consider this as having your own ticking cholesterol time bomb hardwired into your body from birth. And in this case, it's pretty common, meaning if you're the 1 in 200 worldwide with this disease, the liver is unable to properly remove LDL or bad cholesterol from the bloodstream. As a result, cholesterol levels skyrocket to dangerously high levels very early in life. In this case, we're talking about artery-clogging levels that most people don't experience until they are in their 60s. So think of having the vascular system of an overworked 60-year-old by the tender age of 10. Your once smooth arteries and blood vessels start getting blocked up with cholesterol blocks that build up at a young age. It's like slowly allowing a thick sludge to accumulate in your body's pipeline.
pipelines. The arteries basically become ticking time bombs themselves, with their narrowing inner diameters restricting blood flow more and more over time. Staphylococcal infections. In staph infections, you're essentially spinning a wheel of fortune to determine the severity of your infection. If you are unlucky enough, you could get the mother of all infections, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or just MRSA. To understand what we mean by methicillin-resistant, all you have to know is that, as you're probably aware, whenever you get a bacterial infection, you're given a regimen of antibiotics that should clear up. However, in some individuals who don't finish the dose because they feel better, the bacteria left are now resistant to those antibiotics. This makes MRSA infections incredibly harder to treat than ordinary staph infections. And MRSA skin infection symptoms often begin as small red bumps all over the body that progressively become more swollen, painful, and filled with pus resembling an abscess or boil. In more invasive MRSA MRSA infections, MRSA can spread to the whole body, where we develop something called sepsis. Your body is now dealing with a body-wide invasion of a superbug, and more often than not, it will lose.